Before I begin, uh, I wanted to give a brief introduction to the CATI's advanced simulation team. Uh, we were formerly uh, K-Links, uh, and we merged with CATI to kick off 2021. We have 16 simulation engineers, and we've been Simulia experts since 2005. We cover, again, we also cover a variety of industries, um, and we specialize in a variety of different uh, simulation capabilities um, in both uh, the software solution space as well as the engineering services space. Myself personally, I've been an Abacus and HyperMesh user for the last seven years. I've been using the 3D experience for the last two. Um, I, I focus my, uh, my engineering uh, expertise primarily in the life science medical device space, automotive and aerospace, and the type of analyses I'm doing on a daily basis are, are crash, buckling, NVH, um, you name it, um, working on a lot of different types of techniques. And I wanted to give this as kind of a, a precipice for uh, for the talk of, of the, the type of uh, work that I do and how the 3D experience has fit into that. So historically, the, uh, the 3D experience, uh, well, I should say traditional uh, virtual prototyping tools of the simulation software, like your traditional abacus, um, has been really focused on giving you extremely accurate results. Um, however, uh, you know, these tools have been, uh, you know, a bit labor intensive, uh, not necessarily very compatible with uh, multi-tool uh, situations, as well as not being very collaborative and having complicated licensing and hardware requirements. So the 3D experience is really positioned to uh, minimize those issues with creating a lot of techniques uh, um, built on top of the uh, tried and true Abacus platform, um, it's, it's added a lot of functionality to increase your productivity while still getting to utilize uh, that, that extremely accurate solver. So the topics we're going to look at today are um, automated modeling, uh, all tools being in one data source, the workflows, the flexible licensing, cloud integration. And these are all tools that I've kind of handpicked personally that I think really really emphasize the value that the platform has provided in democratizing simulation. And, you know, really, really, we want to focus on why should this be important to you um, in the platform through the examples that we're going to talk about. It's going to save you time, reduce errors, improve collaboration that ultimately means that you're going to save money, reduce your headaches and expedite your innovation. So with that being said, the first example that I have is a situation where, uh, you know, with this being somewhat uh, similar to a SOLIDWORKS simulation workflow, but now built on the tools of the platform, you can see we have a, a simulation that uh, we are going to evaluate and then we are, you know, we've decided we need to modify this design. All this data is going to be completely linked from the design to the analysis. So as you modify your design, all you're going to end up needing to do is you can see we are modifying some holes then we're going to modify some some radii um, all we really need to do with that data being parametrically linked we can update the simulation with one click rerun and have our results ready to go so there's no remeshing there's no manual reconnecting of of uh of models um, and this is available on uh, on the platform as well as uh, with solidworks uh, pdm data as well the next topic is, well, what if I have suppliers that are sending me step data? Um, you know, do I lose that parametric functionality? So this is something that happens all the time. Um, and this is a really nice tool built into the platform that allows you to parameterize non-parametric data. So you really still ke can keep that main, uh, that, that connected data environment and have the ability to, as you can see, this, this uh, ledge is being extruded. This is just non-parametric step data all on the fly. Well, so you're taking non-parametric data and you are linking it to your simulation. So very powerful tool. Um, and this is something that, that has come in handy quite a few times. The next uh, really exciting thing that the, the platform does is it changes, uh, you know, from a traditional abacus user, it changes the way materials are thought of. So in traditional tools, materials are stored as, uh, aren't stored as objects, they're stored in the files, uh, the simulation files themselves. So in the platform, our materials are actually stored as objects in the platform, and it can encompass a variety of different domains for each, 
each material. So you can see in this uh, this this uh, 5052 aluminum has uh, structures, fluids, and injection molding domains assigned to it, and we're able to use the domain for the for the uh, simulation at hand. And these are also paired with our rendering materials as well. So um, our, what we end up getting is we get that connectivity from the beginning of our design side all the way through our analysis to our simulation side and it minimizes mistakes, errors, and has that data all in one location. Um, and as you're going to see, uh, a really cool tool that I really like is you can see I'm, I have an elastic plus plastic behavior right here specified. I can actually create another behavior. So you can see I have a thermal behavior. I'm going to create a new one. Uh, it's going to be titled elastic. And uh, I just turn this, uh, the elastic on. I'm not selecting the plasticity. And then I can go into my shell section. And I can change that behavior from elastic plastic to just elastic. So no longer are we having dummy material cards just to have uh, you know, linear material properties. We have all of our data in one location and we can make the behaviors uh, while still keeping that, that item uh, in that same material object. So very cool tool, increases collaboration and minimizes errors. The next tool, which is still on the same topic of materials, is that there's a material calibration tool built into uh, the platform. Um, this is this is a little similar to the Abacus co uh, collaboration tool, but it, it has the latest and greatest technology. And again, it's keeping those materials um, in the same collaborative environment. So this is going to take your your test data from the lab, and it's going to help you build your hyperelastic, viscoelastic, plastic material carts and then have that stored in the uh, platform uh, to be reused by anyone else on your team. So going into the automated modeling uh, talk uh, workflow, so you know, in situations where you have a lot of uh, assemblies that might be of very similar uh, designs, but you know, they're all of different assemblies and all need to be analyzed. If you have a lot of these, you can actually procedurize this. So you're gonna see this is uh, me using a procedure and it's going to go through and actually mid surface all of these different parts. It's going to create the material property sections. It's going to create the spot welds. It's going to create the uh, the mesh. And in a matter of minutes, uh, this whole model has been made. And uh, this is something that can you can just kind of completely remove the uh, the manual labor requirement from your workflow. As you can see a nice mess has just been ready and this is ready to go right to the solver. So very cool uh, th uh, thought, thought through process, um, really giving you the power to automate when needed uh, for, for situations where it makes sense. So in situations where, uh, you know, not as, a, as an entire model, say you, you do have a one-off design like this bumper model I created, but you have a lot of connections uh, that, that might be a little work intensive We've, we even have uh, a lot of functionalities to automate some of these uh, workflows as well, even if they aren't on a necessarily uh, procedure that's you know across a lot of different platforms. So you can see right here, I'm creating, uh, I'm, I'm setting up parameters to search my domain for bolts. Um, I'm creating the definition for my bolt, you know, deformable or rigid, and uh, so uh, I'm just setting up my parameters and then. Uh, I'm going to search my domain based on bolt size. You can see I found the eight bolts that are going to be bolted to my uh, front bumper. And then uh, I, I, I'm going to have some welds on this model. So uh, the welds will be uh, going to be called line fasteners. Um, and I got one, it's kind of like welded to itself. And then the front tubes are welded to those plates. So I'm going to select my domain. I'm going to select my lines. And uh, you know, so yeah, so just specifying where where my welds are going to be located. I'm going to then uh, make my uh, weld properties after I select these um, these lines. So see, all my lines are selected. These are where my welds are going to be. And then I'll create my my weld data. So I need I get, I can you know if I had like adhesive, I could do I could set this up for adhesive or glue. Um, this is going to be a weld, so I need to make it that metal material. And then uh, I'll give it 
just again sign my behavior so i'll have it with plastic information plasticity information and then sign my size and my element formulation i can hit ok and then i'll hit find supports it's going to search my model And then if I zoom in, I, you can see there's some yellow cylinders that are specified for my lines. And then all I have to do is just hit the uh, I'll hit OK and then I'll hit my update button. And it's going to mesh this. Uh, it's going to mesh this model um, and uh, some warnings that are, are no of not any significance. If I turn my mesh on, um, you can see this has all been meshed very nicely into the model. So again, this is really describing a workflow that I'm doing actually some pretty complicated modeling, uh, putting in bolts and welds, and I was able to get this whole model meshed and, and uh, ready to go in just a few minutes. So very exciting technology. Um, this also is applicable to ties and contact. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just making making workflows a lot faster. So the next bit of technology is uh, in the 3D Experience platform, we have an updated result file format. So uh, this is now the SIM file format. Uh, for Abacus users, we're used to the ODB file format. So this is going to give us extremely fast uh, res uh, animation times as well as improved graphics. So for someone that's uh, done a handful of CFD and uh, crash analyses, this is something that's really exciting. I, I do have a lot of memories uh, waiting for a very long time for stuff to load. So again, just increasing that productivity in every, uh, in every way possible um, throughout the, the entire workflow of the tool. We are uh, moving to the platform. We do have some flexible solver options uh, using uh, both traditional token-based licensing as well as credit-based licensing. Um, the token-based licensing is uh, is a you know traditional use of tokens being checked out, and then uh, the analysis uh, then releases them when it's finished. And then you have uh, credit-based licensing, where uh, you're just using a credit per hour licensing scheme, and you can run as many jobs in parallel as needed. So this is very exciting. We actually uh, a, a case study of our own simulation team. We actually switched over to this um, for our uh, for our own uh, consulting use, and you can see, on a handful of days, we did uh, we did uh, relieve ourselves of bottlenecks, so um, we we're able to get a lot more work done uh, in the same amount of time compared to a traditional uh, token licensing scheme. So, very excited technology that that uh, is available again on the platform. We have uh, a lot of flexible solver options, so. Um, with traditional Abacus, uh, you get all of it uh, with one license. Um, that's how a lot of other tools are as well. Um, with the platform, you can see we have roles ranging from the structural designer with uh, just your linear analyses, going all the way to the structural analysis engineer, covering all your different physics uh, domains, uh, dynamic, explicit, static, nonlinear, et cetera. So you can really get the right GUI to fit your exact needs, um, all available at different price points. Uh, the the Simulia domain does offer a comprehensive physics offer, offering, not just in structures, but also fluids, acoustics, electromagnetics, multi-body dynamics, mold flow, multi-physics, and all your optimization technologies as well. So it definitely can be a one-stop shop for all your simulation needs, and that is uh, extremely exciting to uh, to know going into uh, that has just been announced at the Smulia user meeting uh, a few weeks ago is a unified licensing model. So um, we're very excited that this is rolling out. So um, this is going to allow your token or licensing uh, pool that is in the sim unit licensing uh, domain to uh, be used with all of the different solvers. So you're uh, going to have a comprehensive simulation suite uh, at your disposal disposal um, using those, those sim unit licensing uh, functionality. In addition to having, uh, uh, you know, having all those different physics solvers available, um, the you have an opportunity using the platform to expand your technology. So there's new roles and, and workflows coming out uh, every month on the platform. Um, and your simulation data uh, has the opportunity to be tied to a lot of your different business functions, whether it's project management, life cycle, design, 
manufacturing. There's even a lot of marketing roles coming out as well um, that are really, uh, there's a lot of excitement as those are coming out. So um, this really is positioning uh, yourself in a collaborative, uh, unified environment for all the best industry leading tools um, available um, on the platform. Um, especially now with uh, a lot of work from home being uh, being uh, required and popular, um, the cloud has been uh, for us in particular as well offering a uh, a nice way to uh, keep our productivity as high as possible um, while our physical location is not necessarily uh, known. So um, we we really only need a laptop and an internet connection to do that high end solving that we are used to as uh, as engineering consulting analysts. Um, and there's also uh, our IT requirements have gone down as well with us not having to uh, maintain all that uh, hardware infrastructure using the cloud solving capabilities. So it is definitely uh, an option to, you know, if you have t people working all over the globe, um, this is a tool that, that can work seamlessly uh, for all your uh, cross-functional requirements. And then, uh, on top of that, you know, we have, we're introducing a, a new technology with the platform and um, something that's really exciting is, is, a, is a comprehensive uh, training portfolio um, that really covers all the different physics as well as all the different roles offered inside of those physics um, to give you confidence that when you, uh, if you choose the platform as your product development tool of choice, uh, you're, you're fully supported with all the different uh, training uh, material that is on uh, the, the 3D, uh, excuse me, the EDU space. So this is currently available uh, for a named user per year model. Um, it's only uh, a few hundred dollars per user per year. It's a, it's a very exciting discount that is available uh, currently. So again, highly recommend it. And there's a lot of material um, for really getting your, your team uh, using simulation, all the different uh, expertise it needs. So uh, with that being said, I believe there's just one more row of uh, training material coming through. And yeah, so that is it. So we talked about a lot of different uh, material today we, uh, with data linkage, materials, automated modeling, uh, flexible licensing, um, and, and all the different technologies that are available being on the cloud. So we are very excited to uh, be working with the 3D experience and helping our customers get the most uh, for their for their engineering needs. And uh, we, we truly think that the platform is making engineering easier. So uh, we hope uh, we can answer any questions you might have and uh, whether on this webinar or a follow up meeting. And uh, again, I'd like to thank you uh, for your time uh, helping us uh, empower you the innovators with all of our uh, available product development solutions. So Again, thank you uh, for your time, everyone, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.